What is up everyone it's Saber here and welcome to another Naruto What If. If you end up liking the video please consider subscribing, it's free and you can take it back at any time and it really helps me out and this is my third channel so if you want some more what ifs go check out my other channels. And with all of the YouTube formalities out of the way let's get into it. So Sarutobi stared hard at his still recovering son your report is pretty much clear on what happened I'm sorry Asuma but it doesn't look good I know Asuma replied feeling somewhat bitter he was an experienced Jonin and his latest assignment was a total bust he almost died his students as well thank Kami that Kakashi was close enough to bail them out of the trouble he should have stuck with the procedure and marched straight back to Kanoa no C rank was worth the lives of his pupils who were also clan heirs he'd feel repercussions for a while Akimichi Chozo wasn't too happy with him at the was he thinking when he decided to go on Sarutobi read all these thoughts from his son's face and posture and he felt for him but there could be no favoritism towards anyone not even to his son I understand prefectly what is going on in your head Asuma and I recommend you let it go learn from it but don't let it drag you down in a retrospect this mission wasn't totally ruined Kanoa gained a new client who will show preference towards its ninjas it's not a small feat politically we will gain a client state between us and the water country and your students have gained an invaluable experience in the field the kind that few survive to benefit from build upon it use it to sharpen their teamwork and desire to better themselves yes i was going to but honestly i made a deadly blunder father we escaped by hair's width and naruto saved them again gato was a clever bastard indeed that boy Surely surprised everyone Sarutobi smiled he was pleased to hear how Naruto saved the day he seemed to be a very promising ninja I must admit Naruto seems to be the most competent genin of this generation Asuma said with conviction the way he took care of the mercenary force and forced Sabuza to stop fighting it was just neat simple efficient too brutal as well he eliminated nearly 50 men yes that's impressive but I've seen better and worse so don't worry about him Sarutobi said calmly as for your punishment that will be simple you will have an official reprimand in your record your team will be banned from taking a mission above C rank for 3 months and you will have to give Naruto half of your pay from the next 5 A B or S rank get back to your home and recover you look like you're going to drop dead honestly you should take better care of yourself Naruto was mildly bored 2 long months passed since the mission to the waves and not much excitement occurred in that time. Team 7 took more D ranks in Kanoha to have more time for extra training meaning Sasuke and Sakura were playing catch up game with Naruto who bested them repeatedly in every physical and chakra based exercise frankly Kakashi was forced to become creative in ways to train Naruto beyond what Naruto did himself he started to give Naruto some jutsus much to Sasuke's displeasure so Naruto became the designated jutsu user. On the team it was only logical considering his chakra reserves Sasuke was. Pisto he tried to hide it but Kakashi wasn't blind he explained to Sasuke that he would be able to copy those later on with ease he just had to build up his reserves Naruto could care less because he learned those jutsus almost ridiculously fast Kakashi was embarrassed to have forgotten about shadow clones and their memory transfer ability Naruto smiled in memory of Sasuke and Sakura gaping at him when he mastered the water based jutsus Kakashi copied of Zabuza in one day even Kakashi was Surprised Naruto wasn't the force was a flawless guide to everything he did its preternatural insights served Naruto well for he was able to feel almost instantly how the justs worked in a way his ability was better than Sharingan that only copied Naruto master techniques with little training since he was able to feel chakra flows and predict fear effects he realized he could develop a sense to predict a jutsu its range and nature given enough time and experience also he discovered that chakra nature wasn't an obstacle for him the force made him one with everything and so was with chakra and its five natures fire lightning wind earth and water cock she was beginning to suspect the same naruto knew because he gave naruto more than just water jutsus naruto learned earth clones and cock she's favorite headhunter jutsu he gave naruto a basic lightning jutsu called the shock fist it was a nice one where the user has to imbue his fist with lightning and it sends a shock in the enemy when it struck him only three hand seals for that fire jutsus he showed Naruto just the grand fireball but that one was very versatile and generally the most known amongst Kanoa ninjas of a chunin rank and above it was Kanoa's trademark in fact but Naruto showed an unbelievable propensity for when Kakashi showed him the great breakthrough jutsu Naruto tore apart dozens of trees in the training ground with one blast and made a 20 meter long gouge in the ground it was impressive Kakashi left it at that his repertoire was lost but he believed that Naruto didn't need more jutsus he told Naruto to work on mastering these for various situations and left it at that he pushed Sakura to train harder physically and luckily she listened the wave mission gave her a wake up jolt she needed so badly in turn Sasuke grew even more determined to grow stronger since he had his Sharingan he increased his efforts and Kakashi begun training him to use his bloodline of course in private sessions too. 
keep prying eyes away the other reason he hid those lessons from the other two of his students, he was a little ashamed of his favoritism because he also expanded those lessons on other things but how could he refuse to train such an eager pupil Abito's cousin Naruto was walking down the street when he heard someone yell in distance he cast his force sense around to see what was going on he felt two ninja signatures a man and a girl and Konoamaru and his friends Udon and Moegi Naruto knew. Konoamaru a little bit the brat was annoying and focused on defeating his grandfather the third Hokage to prove his worth it was embarrassing really Konoamaru would try and rush his grandfather proclaiming his goal and then trip over his short legs Naruto avoided the boy like a plague and when he couldn't he just pretended to be nice for the third sake Naruto sneaked around the street and saw what was going on a guy in brown suit that covered him from head to toe was holding Konoamaru by. His stupid scarf in the air at his eye level Naruto saw a paint on his face and soon a headband the guy was Asuna Genin and he was meaning business with the kid the girl with a large fan at his side wasn't really into it she was impatient go on her way she was pretty tall and blonde with brown eyes also very nervous on the inside Naruto grinned and slowly sneaked upon them his feet made no sound that's why the painted dude dropped Konoamaru when Naruto made himself known from behind hey what's the matter Naruto grinned at the two Suna Genin have these brats offended you somehow mind your own business blondie I've got it covered the painted boy said after he got calmer he was suspicious though not many Genin could sneak upon him and his sister come on Kankuro the girl scolded stop making a scene we have better things to do remember why are we here sure Tamari Kankuro said as he eyed Konomaru who wisely scrambled to Naruto's side just a sec to punish the brat for hitting me Naruto. San I wasn't watching where I was running when I hit him it's just a misunderstanding Konoamaru said as he hid behind the older boy who enjoyed his grandfather's confidence he often heard his grandpa talk about Naruto well there's that Kankuro San Naruto said to the Suna Gen and still smiling it's just an accident it's not like you were really injured can we forget this and move on screw you that kid hit me and he's gotta pay Kankuro growled moving his fingers surreptitiously as chakra strings latched onto Konoamaru and pulled him towards their creator but Naruto moved and grabbed Konoamaru arresting his forward momentum stop doing that Naruto spoke coldly blasting Kankuro with potent killing intent are you trying to provoke a war what are you trying to say Tamari asked with worry she was intimidated as was Kankuro this boy was able to use killing intent like Gara. this kid is the grandson of our Okage Naruto patted Konoamaru's shoulder I'm sure he'd be interested to find out that some bully from foreign village tried to beat him up over nothing fuck you I'll beat you instead Kankuro hissed and took his package of his back Kankuro Tamari warned him but it was too late Naruto already made his hand seal and 20 clones sprang into existence you and what army Naruto teased he pushed Konoamaru away and told him to run the boy listened and his friends joined him Kankuro seated getting ready to attack but suddenly stopped Naruto turned to look above and to his left. There was a boy with dead eyes and aura of insanity standing on the tree he was a redhead green eyed and had a gourd on his back there was a kanji for love on his left brow stop embarrassing our village Kankuro the boy said coldly and shun shine down to stand opposite of Naruto forgive us for my brother's stupidity I didn't start it that brat hit me and Kankuro started to complain but Gara cut him off shut up or I'll kill you Gara's voice was cold as ice Naruto sensed he was serious identify yourself since you're obviously foreign and unsupervised Naruto demanded while dismissing his clones the redhead bowed slightly of course I'm Gara of the sand these are my brother and sister I believe you know their names indeed you're here for Chunin exams aren't you Naruto knew of the upcoming event unlike his teammates he doubted that Kakashi was going to let them participate we are Tamari said now relax Naruto since she was counting on Gara to deal with him if the need arose Gara he was an odd one Naruto looked at him and almost laughed he could see that he was a Jinchuriki like him and bats hit crazy oh this was priceless the third would be very glad to know this and you are Gara looked very interested Uzumaki Naruto Naruto smirked and turned away from them good luck to you all in the exam I heard. It's dangerous he could feel Gara's cold stare follow him as he turned around the corner he immediately sped off to meet Sarutobi hey old man Naruto said to Sarutobi after he closed the door to his office it was late in the afternoon when he managed to catch the older man alone hello Naruto what brings you here if it's about Konoamaru no need I already know who you do good Naruto smiled that's what brought me here after Konoamaru left I met the third member of that gen and team he is there. Brother Gara, I know that Naruto they are Kazakage's children Sarutobi spoke impatiently he wanted Naruto to get on with it curious and if you're so knowledgeable then you also know that Gara is like me Naruto said smugly I take it he didn't say that Sarutobi narrowed his eyes and thought no but I felt it somehow don't ask me why must be a Jinchuriki thing Sarutobi nodded perhaps but what do you think of him Naruto shrugged not much he's obviously powerful his brother and sister seem deathly 
terrified of him when he threatened to kill them he is crazy I saw it in his look that's what we heard too from our spies but we didn't know it was Kazakage's youngest child who was Shikaka's container Sarutobi mused aloud what kind of a man makes his son a container and then drives him mad in his quest for power I take it you don't like the Kazakage Naruto spoke casually he didn't need Sarutobi's answer his feelings were very clear despite his poker facade no not really now please leave me Alone I have a lot of work to do and thank you for watching over Kanoamaru today no problem Naruto grinned and saluted in joking manner before exiting the office Sarutobi shook his head before pressing his intercom button to raise his secretary ninja get me the ANBU commander and Ibiki immediately Ishikawa san he didn't call for Danzo the man already knew most likely the presence of an unstable container called for extra security team 7 was nominated to enter the Chunin exam despite Naruto's expectations Kakashi had expressed his belief in their skills if one read between the lines it meant he was pretty sure that Naruto and Sasuke were good enough to protect Sakura and pass the exam in relatively intact state that's why they stood in the hallway on the second floor of the ninja academy listening to Sasuke boasting about his wonderful Jinjutsu detection at least he had complimented Sakura on an belated attempt to encourage her really smooth well it wasn't in Naruto's opinion the Duck had just had to open his mouth and boast he failed to realize that this trick with a fake room for the exam was meant to discourage those truly inept to spare their worthless lives, also it attracted undue attention on Team 7 and increased the number of rivals in the real test all of that with just a few words Sasuke was awesome not Naruto at least got the satisfaction of watching Sasuke get trounced by the green clad genin, with enormous taijutsu skills to increase Sasuke's humiliation. Naruto told him that he got beaten by a person unable to use chakra externally and who was wearing at least half a ton of weight on him that shut him up finally all the way to the real exam room and there were other rookie teams Asumas and Karinai's look at that now all rookies are here Inazuka Kiba said grinning widely Naruto knew he was just hiding his nervousness Sasuke Kuanino squealed happily and leaped to hug him Sakura pushed Sasuke aside to stop Ino's advances on her prey Naruto shook his head sadly fangirls were such a pest, but it was fun to watch Sasuke being pulled by them like a dolly troublesome women Shikamaru muttered to Naruto you guys got roped in this too you know something I don't Naruto wondered idly while exchanging nods with Choji and Shino both Jenin were listening too I'm not sure but my dad said that the Hokage allowed our nominations despite Iruka sensei's objections so Naruto asked he was with Iruka at first but yesterday he changed his mind and here we are in this troublesome situation Hashika you're just pissed that you have to work hard again Kiba snorted I can't wait for the fun to start I'm gonna win this hey would you lower your tone kid said a gray haired boy with round glasses he looked tall athletic and about 17 or 18 years old this is a serious thing what do you mean Sakura asked I'm 5 years your senior and I've been attempting to pass the Chunin test for 7 times I failed only luck and my team kept me alive see those guys behind me those are the best genin from every village there's every single one has an ambition to be a chunin it's a harsh competition who are you naruto asked feeling suspicious of the newcomer who was more than he seemed he definitively was lying about something my name is yakushi kabuto kanoha's genin i'm feeling generous today so i'll share my knowledge of other genin here if you like i've had a lot of opportunity to gather information on them the gray-haired teen spoke with Charm he flourished a set of cards I have it all on my Nina info cards all I have to do is to channel my chakra in them and the info will become visible so anyone curious Sasuke took the bait first Rock Lee and Uzumaki Naruto Kanoha Jen and Kabuto asked in surprise then shrugged all right here it goes Rock Lee's Jen and with one year of service 75 D ranks 46 C ranks not bad no ninjutsu or jinjutsu but his taijutsu is off the scale his sensei is made Ogai Kanoha's premiere Taijutsu fighter his teammates are Hyuga Niji and Igarashi 1010 Uzumaki Naruto and Kabuto searched for another card ah there he is 42d rank 7c ranks and won a rank mission high stats on Taijutsu Ninjutsu and Kenjutsu as Jinjutsu stands as average although he rarely uses it Sensei Hataki Kakashi impressive Naruto smiled politely thanks Kabuto san care to tell me about Gara of the san no problem Naruto Kun Kabuto smiled and got another card here he is from Suna 30d ranks 39 c ranks and one solo b rank mission while he came back without a scratch from each mission he sure something else kabuto observed every rookie with satisfaction as you can see every gen in here is strong of course there are some new faces here like those from the new village the sound not really powerful as it is but you can be sure they will try to prove themselves that's when the trouble emerged a trio od gen in from the sound rushed kabuto since they heard his condescending 
description of their village Kabuto dodged the attack from one of them or it just looked so his glasses cracked and Kabuto threw up a little and fell on his knees he looked shocked Naruto narrowed his eyes for a second then smoothed his face he watched the genin who swung his arm at Kabuto he was equipped with earmuffs and his arm had a metal gauntlet Naruto noticed it despite the sleeve. The only thing that had physical ability to strike yet remain unseen was the air or the sound Naruto bet. It was the second thing because Kabuto lost balance and puked sound could disturb the inner ear quite easily but the fight was interrupted by the arrival of the examiner a tall trench coat wearing guy with bandana covering his head his face had scars and he looked mean no fights are allowed unless we say otherwise Jen and the guy growled at the sound trio menacingly another outburst like that and you're out of the exam sorry. We got too excited the sound throwing Jen and spoke insincerely he didn't. Bother to be convincing I am Marino Abiki your proctor in the first test get your seat numbers and shut up Abiki yelled and everyone obeyed taking the numbers by his assistance a bunch of mean hawk eyed chunins when everyone was in their place Abiki cleared his throat this exam will be a written test but there are some rules that have to be obeyed without question you will have 9 question to answer in your papers while the 10th will be asked later now you have exactly 1 hour to write your Answers no cheating that will cost you points if you are caught enough times you will be expelled and your teammates can pass this exam only together also very team member must answer enough questions to pass if he doesn't he and his buddies are out that's the second rule the third will be announced later when the tenth question comes up you may start now everyone was shocked with harsh rules especially about being failed as a team and the questions were obviously too difficult for mere genins. Well not for Sakura and Naruto Sakura was a very bright girl and Naruto had the benefit of having a teacher from a society that was thousands of years ahead Naruto had to learn the galactic level knowledge which included hyperspace mathematics xenobiology and molecular chemistry and there was much more thank Kami he had the force it helped him to memorize the sheer data master avarice was cramming in Naruto's mind thus Naruto easily solved simple physics questions and some others he didn't Bother to write at all he had enough to pass he idly started to observe the other Jen and Sonata who used her bloodline to gather answers from a guy two rows ahead Naruto scanned him idly impressed with his knowledge and almost laughed he was a plant to provide the answers for those who knew how to cheat properly Naruto realized that the test was meant to weed out those who couldn't cheat well. Enough he approved this was worth his respect he saw Sasuke use a Sharingan to copy the writing movements of another fake gen and he noticed Shino's bugs collecting answers Kiba's partner Akamaru was on his head thus able to see someone's paper and tell Kiba the right answers soon the elimination of those two inept started by the time the hour was up 12 teams were kicked out Naruto had a feeling it wasn't over yet Ibiki was feeling gleeful as of a sudden stop writing maggots the test is. About to end now is the time to answer the 10th question but there is a new rule here I'm giving you two options you can refuse to take the 10th question or not but if you do and answer it wrong you fail and of course your teammates fail too regardless of their answer and regardless of your results of the written test why would we want to refuse the question then someone asked what was on everyone's mind a beaky grin good question brat well if you refuse to answer you fail and can try again. In 6 months somewhere else it's your bad luck that I'm the proctor this time at but if you answer and it's wrong well then you will never be allowed to take the Chunin exam again I have it in written from your kages that it will be enforced so who's staying and who's leaving and hurry up I'm not a patient person Ibiki smiled happily as audience swallowed his speech hook line and stick to he loved playing with his victims minds Naruto could feel it was just another trick Ibiki's emotions were easily read but he had to admit that the guy was devious he just cornered every genin in the room and they started to panic like little headless chickens the number of quitters begun to rise quickly and Naruto was amused he frowned when he saw Sakura hesitate she was worried for Sasuke crap she was going to quit he slammed his palm on the table the sound stopped everyone and they stared at Naruto who glared at Ibiki bring it on already I'm not scared so what if I won't be able to take this Exam again it won't stop me from training and becoming stronger there are people out there without any official rank in ninja world yet they are easily as strong as any kage that stopped most of the remaining genin cold and Ibiki glared at Naruto he eyed the genin in the room who remained and realized his bluff wasn't working anymore well anyone else wants to quit nobody moved Ibiki. Side alright you passed everybody face faulted at that time skip alright maggots this is the place for your. Second test training area 44 or better known as forest of death said the proctor for the second test she was tall athletic and absolutely mean in appearance and behavior her name was Mitarashi Anko special Jown and she was determined to cut the number of the Chunin hopefuls and half Anko was barely dressed under her yellowish trench coat she looked like a prostitute except she moved like a tiger on prowl making most of the present genin very uncomfortable Naruto wasn't disturbed by her. 
behavior neither was the other Jinchuriki but he carefully took note of Kabuto's hidden amusement shared by the female grass ninja whose signature in the force sent strange signals to him the presence was oddly male yet at the same time it was female still whoever he or she was she slash he was very good at concealing their true strength and she slash he was very interested in his team more likely because of the Uchiha as Naruto. Knew it meant trouble suddenly he leaned aside to dodge the kunai thrown by. Anko who flashed behind him with another under his chin look look Anko purred as she draped herself on Naruto's back causing several older genin feel envious of the blonde are you finding this boring genin maybe poor Anko-chan wasn't clear when she said you should pay attention there was a thin line of blood now trickling down Naruto's throat and Anko licked it gleefully mmm sweet young blood too bad the young ones tend to die first Naruto used his finger to push her kanai away and shrugged well. Why don't you get on with the show I'm bored already spoil sport Anko grumbled and then turned around suddenly at the grass Kunoichi who had her thrown kunai wrapped within her elongated tongue watch it Jen and you could get yourself killed by sneaking up on your superiors I'm sorry your kunai grazed my hair I got excited but I wanted to give it back grass Kunoichi said and offered it to Anko Anko swiped it from her showing no disturbance at the large tongue she pocketed the blade and returned to Stand in front of them all again okay your task is to enter this area and get another scroll from others remember to pass you must complete this test with both scrolls heaven and earth with your teammates alive and within 5 days you have to show up at the central station that is your finishing line so to speak before you enter you will sign special forms that my colleagues are giving you why some genin asked why to state that Kanoha or myself aren't responsible for your death or injury that will surely occur in this test Anko spoke gleefully and said Jenin plus many others paled Sakura's nervousness shot up too but she held her posture relatively well she was counting on Sasuke and Naruto to watch her back Naruto idly toyed with the idea of letting his teammates die but cast it away it would be too convenient in the eyes of Kakashi and other higher ups even Sarutobi would be suspicious Naruto grinned as he was sailing through the air after being thrown away by the powerful burst of some kind of wind technique he sensed the buildup of chakra before it got him he let it hit him he used the force to control his flight and landed softly on the trunk of the gigantic tree and then hopped on the other to avoid being eaten by a huge snake coiled around the tree he landed on the oversized mouse trap eyed Naruto balefully it didn't like its prey escaping Naruto sensed that the thing had chakra and intelligence it was a summon and only one person summoned snakes at least that he knew of Orochimaru Orochimaru was a legendary Jounin of Kanoha one of the so-called three legendary ninjas the Sanin he was once a candidate for the position of the fourth Hokage but wasn't chosen Sarutobi selected Namake's Minato who was younger but no less powerful than his favorite student he sensed something was wrong with his student and later he was proved right Orochimaru became obsessed with immortality and started to experiment on people even on fellow villagers and ninjas the Madman escaped never to return or so was thought obviously he was after Sasuke's prized bloodline Orochimaru was known for his fascination with the fabled Sharingan as the summoned snake assaulted again Naruto led it around on a merry chase the creature could never hope to catch the young Sith it was laughable so Naruto laughed and played with the snake until he grew bored and used one of his clones as a decoy the clone exploded in snake's belly, forcing it to return to its realm exploding tags. Attached on the clone worked splendidly and cost less chakra than an exploding clone variant when Naruto sneaked upon his teammates and on Orochimaru who didn't sense his presence due to the ability of his to dampen his presence with the force he saw that they were absolutely terrified of the strange grass Kunoichi who easily defeated them with mere killing intent Naruto did nothing as he watched Sasuke run with Sakura he instead observed the snake summoning ninja as he moved effortlessly in a creepy snake-like fashion Naruto shook his head this guy was taking his reputation way too seriously he scanned him with the force directly focusing deeply he saw it then the truth behind the illusion of humanity Orochimaru was actually somehow possessing a new body of female ninja Naruto was fascinated he never expected that it was possible to do so without the force yet chakra was a mental power too and seals could accomplish almost anything in theory obviously Orochimaru managed to find a way to transfer himself in a new body it was ironic Orochimaru actually succeeded in doing what many Sith Lords failed at Naruto was certain that his master was going to be most annoyed that some force blind bully with almost uncontrollable fear of death managed to find a way to cheat death finally Sasuke managed to calm himself with Kunai stabbed in his leg the pain shook him up and he angrily started to attack the older ninja as he was provoked with comment about his brother Naruto found it 
utterly predictable Sakura was standing useless and Sasuke was running furiously with his bloodline active it was next to useless against an S-class ninja Naruto was also amazed at Sasuke's idiocy he should have realized that his opponent wasn't someone ordinary and snakes were a dead giveaway summoners were rare in the ninja world as Sasuke was finished with his latest attack a wire bound Orochimaru to the tree and Sasuke used a powerful fire jutsu to incinerate him or so he thought Orochimaru laughed merrily snapped the wires and walked out of the fire with just smudges on his skin and clothes which peeled away to reveal his true face well it wasn't but nobody had to know that it was hardly dignified for Orochimaru to walk around as a girl wonderful absolutely wonderful Sasuke Kun Orochimaru spoke in an excited tone I'm the last loyal Uchiha almost lovingly as if he was looking at a precious art piece he was about to gloat some more but a sound of hands clapping stopped him bravo Genius at work is a joy to observe Naruto cheer excitedly so obviously mocking Sasuke and Orochimaru both were called geniuses all the time oh you live Orochimaru spoke in surprised fashion yet it didn't seem to faze him at all it was as if he was considering Naruto an insect that survived his swat not a threat at all Naruto grin nice little snake you sent me Orochimaru we had a nice game of tag it blew her completely out of my way. Orochimaru narrowed his eyes a little he understood Naruto's words fully I see no matter stay out of my way child I have no interest in insignificant brats that is hardly a word that should be used to describe me coward Naruto was still smiling Orochimaru's killer intent through Sakura and Sasuke on their knees the Sanin was staring at Naruto icily Naruto waved cheerfully showing he was completely unfazed by Orochimaru's display of power both Sasuke and Sakura were shocked to realize Naruto wasn't affected my my Naruto drawled still grinning it seems I hit a nerve you are that boy Orochimaru suddenly realized who was this child in front of him of course only a Jinchuriki could be immune to his wrath so you are Uzumaki Naruto both Sasuke and Sakura exchanged looks of surprise Naruto was known to such people as legendary Sanin that would be me Naruto bowed slightly you don't need an introduction your reputation precedes you exceedingly so why thank you so much Naruto kun Orochimaru chuckled in amusement now I'd like to do what I came to do and I'll be on my way he stared hungrily at Sasuke who shivered he now knew who he was facing he seated for a moment he hated being so defenseless that's what I wanted to talk about Orochimaru San Naruto interrupted the San and again yes Orochimaru spoke in low dangerous voice he was getting seriously annoyed with the brat Jinchuriki or no he was nothing to him I assume you plan to do something experimental with my teammate I must caution you against that Naruto spoke in a clown friendly manner when Orochimaru did nothing he took that as a sign to explain himself you see the first thing is that I need Sasuke alive to advance to the next stage of the exam Sasuke gritted his teeth in anger Naruto was such an arrogant self-serving bastard at times why should I care Orochimaru said half amused he decided to hear this now interesting person again I assume that your thing will prove dangerous to Sasuke maybe even disabling I'm concern that I will not be able to cover him and my arguably barely useful female teammate and since this place is full of others who'd love to nail Sasuke for bragging rights if nothing else you see where I'm going even if he lives through your experiment he might not survive other competitors Orochimaru pursed his bloodless lips and thought he had to admit the girl was pitiful and his seal was a dangerous thing to apply on his chosen subjects the blonde brat had a point but not fully so and what are other reasons Naruto shrugged I think that you should also consider what his older brother might decide to do if you mess with Sasuke Sasuke snarled in an instant rage shut up you know nothing about T he suddenly froze as Naruto's killing intent flooded the area much like Orochimaru's did a few moments ago he gasped as he saw Naruto's eyes slitted and bloody red like Sharingan Sakura nearly vomited as she acutely felt Naruto's anger and malice stabbing her between her eyes like sharp Needles heated up by flames Orochimaru raised his eyebrows at such blatant display of power from the boy who seemed so calm he had to admit though that it was impressive and those eyes they were inhuman he shuddered within himself realizing how thin line was between him and the nine-tailed beast just a shell of flesh and child's will nothing in comparison with the fabled creature that once toppled countries just by breathing so to speak and why would Itachi Kun care what happens to his brother? You do know who is he Naruto's killing intent faded and his eyes were again cheerfully blue I think that you should wonder why did he leave him alive when he got rid of his whole family first me I think he had a good reason a very good reason after all a maniac who can kill a whole clan his clan of very powerful ninjas in cold blood had to have a very strong reason to spare his weak brother Orochimaru found himself nodding in agreement indeed I've often wondered at that myself I knew Itachi Koen. 
since he was a mere genin and later as he became a rogue like myself I admit he is a powerful ninja on my level even but he never betrayed any hint of his motivations or attachments to his family then he stared at Naruto remembering those demon eyes and some form of suspicion rose perhaps you know you were after all that child feared and disliked at the same time. With a good reason him there are things that no one should ask Orochimaru Naruto said coolly his mask of deference to the older ninja. Fading it was so complete that even Orochimaru found himself admiring Naruto's acting skills this wasn't some weak ordinary boy but he already had his answer and no sometimes gave away more than silence but the saying of old mentions that silence is golden and gold is always a sign of something being there for all to see if they cared to dig deeper interesting Orochimaru chuckled and if I decide to continue with my original course you will try to stop me Naruto shrugged nonchalantly I certainly don't want to meet Uchiha Itachi and try to explain to him that I didn't think it was worth my skin to help Sasuke besides to fight you I'd have to use my special skills and that would undoubtedly create a lot of damage and even my teammates would be in danger by the way are you really sure that Sasuke is the right one for your thing Orochimaru smiled indulgently I believe I am a good judge of potential child. I was a sensei too certainly better than most of the Jounin and Kanoha I believe you. Still it wouldn't hurt to see more of Sasuke's skills right, I mean one lousy fight against you is hardly a measuring stick Sasuke should have a chance against other opponents to prove his worth and maybe Orochimaru trailed off while considering possibilities this was unfortunately a true and valid point Uchiha Sasuke indeed made a good impression on him but he may have been too lenient in his desire to fulfill his ambition, but he would be hard pressed to mark the child later this was a unique chance to do it who was he kidding he was a sanin and kanoha was once his playground he could do it later he just thought it was much nicer this way to tempt the uchiha more but as he considered it further he realized that sasuke was ripe for taking he just had to wait the boy wanted power he could see it in his eyes no sasuke was already as also if the threat of marking the last uchiha disturbed kanoha's leaders and his old sensei sufficiently to distract them from his real reason for coming Back him he liked that too still he'd love to see how strong was Kyuubi's host if that blasted child of Kazakage's was any indicator well that would just be lovely he almost laughed aloud those fools in the sand village would get weaker and Kanoha would be weakened too and he would have his prizes all to himself without any risks very well Naruto Quinn you've made your case I'll leave your teammate alone for now, if only to amuse myself even more he vanished leaving his trademark creepy chuckle. Echo behind as soon as he was certain that Orochimaru was gone Naruto let go of the force he spent a great deal of his concentration trying to influence the snake summoner he was practically using calm friendly aura just to make Sanin consider his words and then to top it he had to make his suggestions more appealing and convincing them they were it wasn't impossible to influence even strong minded individuals contrary to popular belief it just wasn't as easy as with weak ones and even then. One could only make strong suggestions that had to appear as logical acceptable he could never make Orochimaru do something against his interests so he had to make it look like it was in his favor to leave Sasuke alone for now it was a combination of fast talking mental coercion and a good dose of Orochimaru's arrogance that let him pull this off sweet Kami is he really gone Sakura? Gasped as she realized that the crazy man wasn't with them anymore she was eyeing the surrounding forest in. Paranoia expecting Orochimaru to jump out of shadows saying he tricked them somehow the image of Orochimaru cackling like a child disturbed her the most relax he's gone for now and Naruto said from his perching place on the tree Sasuke stood up and glared at him you went too far Uzumaki I didn't need any protection I can take care of my problems Naruto merely smiled your problems. If that guy had his way with you you'd be screaming in pain right now and be very ill and that would make it mine and. Sakura's problem besides I didn't protect you I just bought you some time to get protection what do you mean by that Sakura asked don't you guys know what Orochimaru did to be cast out of Kanoha he experimented on villagers it was some really nasty stuff he is said to be obsessed with blood limits I guess Sasuke is going to be one of his newest test subjects you can be sure of this he is going to come for Sasuke I just managed to convince him to postpone the doctor's appointment Sakura paled that's insane this is Kanoha one can't just waltz in and do things to our ninja Naruto shrugged you are forgetting that Orochimaru was one of us too and damn good at his job he was almost chosen as the next fourth you know thank Kami he wasn't or Kyuubi would have obliterated the village so we just let him take Sasuke Kuin we have to tell this to Sensei to the third and then they can protect Sasuke Kuin Sakura said hotly we will Sasuke stated firmly but in meantime we have to complete this exam and 
Uzumaki we will talk about some things you said be my guests Sasuke Kuen Naruto smiled mockingly and they moved time skip Naruto sighed in exasperation as he watched others in the hall gape at the third as he was explaining true purpose of the exam it was simply a way to express the strength of one's village to prospective customers while avoiding a war chunin exams allowed each village to show off their ninjas who fought for their promotion yet also for their village to a final conclusion if necessary Naruto understood that from the very beginning the exam wasn't a friendly competition but a real struggle for survival many genins who entered the forest of death didn't make it most of them either fell to the local wildlife or to Gara of the sand and his demon induced madness another person appeared on the floor of the hall he was young but sick Jounin who had a katana strapped on his back and he interrupted Okage's speech excuse me Okage Sama may I take over the next part of this stage Hokage nodded and vanished from the tiled floor without a word the Jounin stared at the Genin blandly for a moment my name is Gekko Hei 8 and I'm your next proctor as some of you may have already guessed the last phase of this exam is about one on one combat so far you've all shown sufficient teamwork otherwise you wouldn't have been here but since there's so many of you who reached the stage and the final round is being observed by important people with little time to spare we will have preliminary matches to determine who amongst you will reach final matches you will wait until your name is called and then you can fight your opponents the rules are simple you fight as long as you can that means until you surrender or lose consciousness or die but when I say that the match is finished you will stop fighting at once or I will stop you is that clear now is there anyone who wishes to leave before we start excuse me proctor I must Give up Yakushi Kabuto raised his right hand in the air looking sorry to do so my chakra is low and I lost hearing in my left ear I'm afraid I can't fight as well as I can you are Yakushi Kabuto correct hey consulted his paper and nodded indeed you are what a bad luck you have all raged you can leave when Kabuto left hey asked for others but no one said anything all right everybody on the balcony the electronic board will show your names in a random fashion and then you fight Naruto followed his teammates who went up to join Kakashi on the balcony and he followed Kabuto's retreat the fake Genin was a liar a good one but he couldn't hide anything from the force sensitive like Naruto Kabuto was no mere Genin more like he was a well-trained spy most likely Orochimaru since he had shown an unhealthy interest in Sasuke also he had a strong emotional reaction when he saw Sasuke uninjured and able to use chakra his thoughts were clear in that moment to Naruto he caught too words cursed seal it was too much of a coincidence when combined with his well hidden lack of fear in the forest his ability to gather information and how well meaning he appeared to be Naruto had to restrain himself from choking Kabuto to the death with a force grip he somehow doubted he could explain that to his annoying teammates who took so long to figure out what the hell those heaven and earth scrolls were for the electronic boards started to roll and Naruto decided to play with them a eh? Little he reached with the force and pushed at their mechanisms to confuse their systems thus altering pairs of combatants from what was meant to be the first pair was Aburam Shino against Akato Yoroi both Genin stepped down to the arena below and faced each other first match Aburam Shino vs Akato Yoroi begin Hei 8 announced and vanished from the floor Shino simply stood in his place as Yoroi rushed at him his move was to grab the rookie, and to his surprise he did and grin Hayor. Mine kid my chakra draining technique will finish you off how curious Yoroi san that you would use such a technique on myself Shino said calmly not showing any pain or fear instead he grabbed Yoroi with both hands and a swarm of insects rushed out of his wide sleeves to latch on the immobilized Yoroi Yoroi tried to disengage from Shino his chakra sucking technique shut down but it was impossible Shino moved closer and more insects poured out from his coat and enveloped Yoroi like a living buzzing second skin soon Yoroi stopped struggling and Shino released the wrestling hold he had on him and his insects retreated under his coat Hei 8 announced his victory and medic means rushed Yoroi's unconscious form out what's so funny sensei Sakura asked Kakashi who was chuckling in amusement oh I was just marveling at that Genin's lack of information to attack an Aburam Nin with chakra draining jutsu it's funny why because of Shino's bugs they were creepy Sakura commented I mean we all no he has them inside his body but I never imagined so many equally close combat with an Aburame clansman is a foolish thing in most cases their bugs are widely known to be able to suck one's whole chakra in a minute or so even a few seconds are sufficient to lose a large supply of chakra this Yoroi fellow surely chose a wrong way to attack Shino you don't drain the Aburame ninja he does that to you if you three face Shino later I recommend you stay away from him Kakashi explained and started 
To read his orange-covered smut again Naruto played with boards again and smiled this time it was Sakura's turn to fight with Hyuga Niji Sakura squared her face into a brave facade but Niji just smirked cruelly as she stood in front of him Haruno Sakura versus Hyuga Niji begin the proctor said and vanished leaving Niji to stare coldly at Sakura Niji. Surprised everyone as he turned his back on the pink-haired girl if you're so weak you aren't even worth the effort Sakura's face contorted. With anger Naruto smiled despite her polite and meek demeanor Sakura had serious anger issues so she was scared easily and weak but that only fueled her anger that often erupted within her her violent escapades against fellow genins in the academy were clear examples of her violent tendencies many a boy suffered her wrath fueled jaw breaking punches but it was a fact she only attacked those she perceived as safe and not many were often she had to suppress her true feelings when faced with. Older and superior people and her polite ass kissing persona became her true self but that anger never left her and she practically had another Sakura within herself brash honest and punch loving Naruto saw this happen over the years and was always fascinated with such a development he pushed on her rage and she reacted she rushed at Niji's back her face scowling her legs flexed and Sakura jumped in attempt to deliver a neck breaking sidekick but Niji ducked slightly waiting for her to touch. Ground his veiny pale eyes glinted victoriously as he delivered a series of quick jabs to her back it was over in three seconds as I said you're not worth my time Niji scoffed arrogantly as he started to walk away from Sakura who couldn't move on the floor medics took her with them after announcing she was not in any danger what was that Sasuke asked Kakashi as his Sharingan spun wildly it looked like he pushed Chakra in her body true your eyes do you proud Kakashi spoke quietly Naruto sighed Slightly that was a short example of perhaps the deadliest taijutsu in Kanoha and the world the Jukin only Hyugas can use it for it relies heavily upon their Byakugan to see chakra coils and Tenketsu this Niji guy he's a genius of their family he was able to see her Tenketsu clearly in combat and shut them down with his chakra delivered via his fingers. Despite looking like taps those strikes hurt Sakura a lot her chakra system was disrupted and she is unable to even stand it will take her a few days to recover if you face him and I think you will don't let him hit you even one hit can end the match if it lands on the right spot Hanaruto said with a smile Sasuke is sure lucky to have his own dojitsu that helps to avoid being hit indeed Kakashi nodded and you're quite fast too and with your shadow clones you can confuse him both of you could beat him but still it's really hard to fight one Hyuga I can't say if you too can win he's more experienced HN Sasuke was usually a man of few words as it was he was the next to fight against Yamanaka Ino Sasuke vaulted down on the floor and waited for Ino to come the girl gave him a sweet smile that barely hit her trepidation she knew Sasuke was too good after Heiade announced the start of their match Sasuke immediately launched an offensive with fast punches and kicks that forced Ino back she managed to backflip from him launch a few kanai to distract the Uchiha who didn't bother activating his dojitsu he saw her do the hand seal for her possession jutsu and blurred aside Ino tried to compensate and switch her aim but Sasuke was too fast he launched his own shuriken this time with active Sharingan Ino tried to dodge but that was just a ruse three shurikens had wires attached on them and guided by Sasuke's deft hands and eyes they ensnared the girl tightly Sasuke pulled hard and she was thrown forward unable to resist Sasuke grabbed her and placed his kanai under her chin his face was calm even pleased as Heide announced his easy victory good job Sasuke Kakashi tapped his student on the shoulder Naruto nodded to Sasuke who just stared at the board in expectation of the next match he didn't have to wait too long it was Kiba's turn against Choji Naruto set himself for a long match Kiba was good at taijutsu relying on his speed and ferociousness while Choji was stronger and had better defensive techniques hey Akamaru let's get Choji right Kiba spoke eagerly to his white furred partner I won't go down easy Kiba Choji said with hungry smile sensei promised me all the barbecue I can eat if I went up on the balcony Yuhi Karinai sighed as she heard that and glared at Sarutobi Asuma who just shrugged sorry Karinai I had to say something to motivate the kid Kiba attacked first making a straight rush for Choji who half crouched and met the Inazuka boy with his hands cross they clashed with a meaty thud Choji actually slid back under the force of Kiba's assault he made a move to smack Kiba with his massive fists but Kiba slid aside quickly and attacked again with his sharp nails and a clawing motion Choji dodged and rushed to overwhelm the dog like Jen and only Kiba's dog partner attacked and foiled Choji's sudden rush Choji had to jump away to avoid having his leg bitten by the white dog Kiba took that moment to make his body more feral with his family jutsu and a soldier pill he was now much faster and his fangs and nails were longer he hit Choji with his shoulder making the big boy stumble back 
Then he slid around and tried for a slashing assault, but Choji was strong and he managed to enlarge his arm several times it became a massive limb that took Kiba's attack easily with both arms now enlarged Choji sought to grab and smash the dog and his owner but Kiba's speed saved him and he made some distance from his opponent he gave a red pill to Akamaru who ate it and became larger red furred dog with more powerful body and chakra Kiba threw several smoke grenades at Choji who disappeared. From everyone's sight Kiba's dog turned into his master and twin feral Kiba's attacked with spinning motion with piercing fangs making it look like two tornadoes were moving in tandem soon everyone heard loud sounds of hitting and yelling in the smoke area it was obvious that Kiba and his dog were using their noses to target the Akimichi but suddenly both of them flew out of the smoke and stared at a rolling ball that Choji became it was twice as large as a man and fast Kiba and Akamaru tried to pierced Choji in this form but the round spinning surface deftly deflected their attacks but Kiba wasn't a quitter he and Akamaru led the Akimichi around using their agility to go the Akimichi in reckless attack Kiba made himself stationary and Choji thought he had him he rolled at Kiba at full speed Kiba vanished in the last second becoming Akamaru while the real Kiba pushed Choji forward into the wall Choji smashed the wall with tremendous force it still wasn't enough to stop him but Kiba took advantage of Choji's confusion and jumped at him and placed his kunai under his chin Choji visibly deflated as he knew he lost winner in Azuka Kiba the proctor said and Kiba grinned toothily picking up his dog and received praise from his sensei and teammates Choji grumbled sadly about losing the chance to eat at his sensei's expense but brightened considerably when Asuma assured him he would get his free meal anyway for the good effort Asuma looked sad at the fact that two of his genin lost their fights, but brightened considerably as he watched Shikamaru demolish the foolish girl from the sound village in one move Shikamaru didn't look happy in turn he hated the fact he would have to fight again in the real final stage Naruto grinned wolfishly and went down to face another sound genin Zaku Abumi Zaku was dark haired mean looking boy with sound's headband under which ran two metallic guards for his face, each for one side of his head hurry up you Kanoha trash Zaku growled impatiently revealing his lack of patience and caution Naruto merely took his time enjoying Zaka's arrogant ignorance Uzumaki Naruto vs Saku Abomi begin hey eight said and vanished Zaku immediately raised his arms and sent a high pressurized burst of air at the blonde genin who merely blurred aside the attack cracked the wall in a wide semicircle proving the strength of Zaku's attack Zaku chuckled evilly at Naruto who was gathering his chakra and making hand seals at surprising speed Hayur just trash any jutsu you throw I'll just throw it back at you and then some more extreme decapitating airwaves die Zaku's palms glowed with gathered chakra and released a massive burst of air at the same time as Naruto unleashed his own jutsu the great breakthrough two airwaves of great power collided sucking almost all of the air in the huge hall and then Naruto smiled and made the same signs again adding another attack almost instantly and overpowered Zaku's attack with a roar of the winds picked up the fool and smashed his body in the opposite wall of the arena a result of Naruto's subtle touch with force telekinesis Saku's body was buried inside the stone blood spattered the edge of the hole he was dead hey eight appeared next to Saku's lower body still sticking out of the hole and made obviously needless check on him winner Uzumaki Naruto he said in the end and medic Nins rushed in to pick up Saku's corpse Naruto just walked away without any care he smirked inwardly knowing that he scared some of his possible opponents with his display of power interesting tactic Naruto Kakashi said to him with thinly veiled interest double jutsu barrage that's unexpected but I admit very creative did you practice that of course you said I should try every combination with jutsus you showed me sensei this one doesn't require too many seals and I thought it would be good to be able to fire powerful wide area blasts in quick sequence it took some time to figure out how to use only half of the gathered chakra for the first blast the jutsu tends to suck all of it if you're not careful how simple and effective kakashi was thoughtful you really did master your techniques i'm glad why didn't you use fire i prefer wind jutsu sensei they are easier for me and more powerful you've shown capacity for all elements if i remember correctly kakashi stated i don't deny i can do them all but i think it has more to do with my chakra than with my elemental alignments if you get what i mean Naruto replied making Kakashi nod Naruto was implying that Kyuubi was involved maybe I, I suppose it's so well we'll continue your education in ninjutsu later let's watch other matches Sasuke was hiding his annoyance he didn't understand what was special about Naruto's chakra and Kakashi wasn't talking he copied Naruto's move but knew also he couldn't produce so much power at once Naruto's chakra capacity was beyond his by several levels still he had his fire jutsus that trumped wind techniques. 
Naruto may be strong, but that wasn't all to being ninja I like that brat Anko grinned in her crazy manner next to Karinai who was frowning at Naruto's display of power you would Anko wouldn't you what's wrong Karinai it was a fair fight and the brat won by sheer power and some skill I doubt that many genins can mold chakra so fast and focused and kids a powerhouse he just killed his opponent and walked away as if nothing happened is it possible that he used it come on don't tell me you're one of those who disliked the kid too couldn't you tell the difference he wasn't using anything but his own chakra he's just that strong and with Hitaki to train him you really shouldn't be so surprised Anko said sharply no I don't dislike him Anko it's just that damn when you and I were genin we weren't nearly as powerful as he is he just expended enough chakra to make most genin too tired for fighting and he's acting like he just had a nice warm up spar Anko chuckled understanding Karinai's frustration both of them had to scrape for every bit of power they gained and it was never enough now here comes a brat half their age and twice their power sorry kure chan but that's the way in our world i'd like his stamina too but not his burden along with it i have enough of my own troubles i know karina said and i'd her students and how am i supposed to train my students to win against someone like him i'm sure you'll find a way anko said and focused on the next match it was another quick one where the red-headed genin formed the sand fought another sound genin it was disturbingly quick the redhead merely let his sand flow and in case his opponent who never saw such jutsu the sand moved like a massive hand and smothered the sound genin in one move turning him into a bloody paste ouch that was nasty the next one attracted everyone's attention it was between rock lee and hyuga hanada they were so opposite of each other that it was funny hanada was shy soft spoken and had no competitive spirit and she wore typical pale Hyuga clothes Lee on the other hand was a pure Mado guy clone tall muscular dressed in the eye killing green spandex and with eternal chipper attitude Yash Hyuga san let's do our best to prove our skills to everyone Lee smiled exuberantly and assumed his nice guy pose and flashed Hanada his toothy shiny smile that was surely meant to blind his enemies H high Hanada spoke and gave him a slight bow she slowly assumed her family's taijutsu stance and Activated her dojitsu making veins around her pale eyes bulge slightly Lee stood fully erect standing in sideways pose his right arm at his right hip his left bent at the elbow and raised towards Hanada begin hey eight ordered and left Lee moved first his form vanishing Hanada instantly spun on the spot half crouching her left deflecting Lee's kick in the right tried to jab his stomach but Lee was obviously very familiar with the jukin because he slaped her palm aside and scrambled away Hanada remained standing content to defend Naruto found her attitude a correct measure since she couldn't match Lee in strength or speed for all her shortcomings Hanada wasn't stupid unlike some girls impressive speed Kakashi observed silently to his students hey you should have seen him kick Sasuke's ass before the first exam Naruto smirked and Sasuke scowled as a Sharingan was following every move Lee made he was analyzing his style Kakashi was well aware of it but said nothing to dissuade him from that no surprise his taijutsu is incredibly advanced which is understandable since Guy is the best taijutsu master and Kanoha Kakashi said with serious tone Lee is probably one of the best gen in here even. Though he can't use chakra sakura asked to say he can't use it would be wrong he just can't convert it into ninjutsu or jinjutsu but the goken doesn't require such things only raw physical energy that doesn't seem impressive sasuke snorted is that so kakashi asked in slightly mocking tone and what if i told you that this genin would have been able to beat that haku person alone no way sakura said in shock look and see kakashi told her and they all saw lee dance in circles around hanada who was desperately avoiding his lightning fast attacks only because her eyes let her see him wherever he went Lee suddenly focused his energy and simply vanished from his spot Hanada didn't have time to wreck he was already under her guard kicking her chin Hanada flew up in the air and Lee suddenly appeared in her shadow delivering several sharp punches to paralyze her body he was to unravel his bandages just like he meant to do with Sasuke but changed his opinion and simply struck Hanada hard a few more times she landed on the floor bonelessly and remained unconscious hey eight, pronounced Lee's victory what was that Sasuke asked yet again unable to follow that speed his red dojitsu spun wild as he observed Lee with venomous intensity him that's one of Kanoa's forbidden taijutsu moves the first lotus it's a part of the forbidden technique that involves the use of celestial gates in one's body Kakashi said as he eyed guy who was praising his student what gates Sakura asked while Naruto and Sasuke listened with avid interest there are eight points in human body that act as regulators for chakra flow and creation in us it's possible to open them thus allowing us to increase our energy exponentially and speed and strength in turn if you opened all of them you'd be stronger than a Kage nice Naruto said and what are drawbacks for using them very good Naruto Kakashi said to the blonde essentially such move leaves its user tired and often injured since such technique puts enormous 
stresses on the body it's like letting electricity go in haywire it burns out its conduit it can be lethal if not executed properly obviously lee is quite good since he wasn't visibly impaired in case of opening all of eight gates it's death sentence no one can survive that hn using chakra like we do is safer than sasuke said and for him that was at the last two fights were kind of disappointing tamari of the sand trashed soundly lee's female teammate who liked weapons too much to learn how to fight a ninjutsu user in Kankuro of the sand killed Tsuruji Masumi a Kanoha genin in a clever way he was hiding the fact he was a puppeteer when Masumi used his rubber-like limbs to envelop Kankuro in a python-like hug Kankuro revealed he was actually hidden in the backpack and manipulating his puppet to pretend it was him he used the puppet to trap Masumi and kill him with inbuilt weaponry congratulations. On your entry in the final round Naruto Okage spoke with Rai smile to Naruto who was Sitting with him in a small office somewhere in the surveillance base where prelims were held that day thanks old man Naruto grinned he always enjoyed the praise from him you have a difficult opponent that Hugo boy I heard many good things about his skills no worries I'll when I already know how do you Sarutobi asked curiously sure it's going to be a nice lesson and looking underneath the underneath Naruto smirked I see you've absorbed Kakashi's lessons well oh well on to the real matter. Sarutobi now became serious I've already heard the report of your teammates about Orochimaru I want yours now Naruto now did you know that he came to toy with Sasuke and do something nasty to him he sent a large summon to get rid of me but I got rid of it instead I had it eat a few explosive tags in my stead stupid snake summons are not to be underestimated many are very intelligent and clever Sarutobi admonished Naruto unable to suppress his tendency to teach well this one wasn't when I got to my teammate's Orochimaru was already about to do what he wanted I proved to be a little distraction so I drew on what little of Kyuubi's power I could muster that damn thing is sure stingy with it you communicated with Kyuubi Sarutobi I Naruto with worry I wouldn't call it a communication Kyuubi isn't exactly fond of me Naruto spoke sharply revealing his annoyance and Sarutobi winced internally but we've reached an understanding he is willing to let me use his power but only in serious situations as long as I'm not about to die I'm on my own that also means I am not allowed to provoke such incidents it hates stupid people strange wouldn't your death mean his death too Sarutobi wondered curiously he lit his trusty pipe hardly so it can't die he'd only reform somewhere else after many years Naruto informed Sarutobi I was afraid of that Sarutobi side I take it Orochimaru also recognized you and took you more seriously not by much but I managed to bluff him a little by threatening to unleash two tails of Kyuubi's chakra and endanger my teammates he wasn't willing to deal with me and the ANBU at once nor he wanted me to harm Sasuke by accident he believed you why not a man like him will assume the worst of others as everyone judges others by themselves as a measuring tape of kind Orochimaru surely would have done it so why wouldn't I indeed Sarutobi agreed sadly also I suggested he could do whatever he planned later anyway and I said I needed Sasuke in fighting condition I gambled there with his calculated outlook on life it appealed to him that I was so cold to my comrades and I think he's enjoying the weight your alarm and Sasuke's fear and he's pretty sure he can walk around here unobstructed with his body masking techniques Naruto added unwilling to reveal that he knew Orochimaru was a body thief that knowledge wasn't easily explained you are very observant young man Naruto Sarutobi said in the end again your intelligence has served you well Orochimaru is that kind of person he enjoys mind games a great deal anything else you've noticed by chance no matter how small it was Naruto made a thinking face before answering well like I said he's very good at hiding his true face what surprised me was that he was truly smelling like a girl a real girl my nose can tell a difference you know I guess it's one of those Jinchuriki things Sarutobi blinked and straightened in his seat how strange and not unbelievable not with him in his goal what Naruto asked but was ignored Sarutobi was deep and thought full of worry and low fear Naruto deduced he also had an inkling of Orochimaru's body hopping considering Sarutobi's unease that was palpable to Naruto like a cold draft of air it was very much true nothing I just remembered something from the old days don't worry you can go I suggest you train hard through the next few weeks oh I will old man Naruto wave goodbye to Sarutobi who took no notice of his exit when Naruto was gone Sarutobi put his head in his arms almost ready to cry Orochimaru what have you done time skip when Naruto saw Kakashi waiting for him at the Ichirakus he grinned inwardly knowing what was coming hi Kakashi sensei he said as he sat down next to the Jounin who was reading his pervy material what's up well Naruto I'm in a quite tight spot Kakashi said in a flat tone that revealed little of his emotions what do you mean sensei Naruto pretended ignorance he wasn't going to make this easy on the man 
You know very well that I have to train you and Sasuke for the final round and I can't be with both of you at the same time sure you can just use shadow clones eat that pervy sensei Naruto cackled in his head as he buried his face in the most delicious ramen in the world Kakashi sighed you know that I can't use them like you actually no one can honestly it's ridiculous how long your clones can exist and how far can you send them Naruto's current record was 3 days and 20 kilometers with three clones which was scary and insane so you're choosing Sasuke over myself Naruto said in a bleak voice causing Kakashi to wince in guilt I don't have any choice not really Gara of the Saiyan will try his best to kill him while Niji won't do that to you Kakashi's excuse seemed solid I see Naruto stared in distance you don't believe I can beat this Niji guy it's not true I just feel that saving Sasuke's life is more important at the moment he isn't as strong as you are and if what you said of Gara is true he's dead meat I need every moment at my disposal to give Sasuke some chance to make it out of that fight alive while Sasuke better doesn't hear you he'll be crushed by your low opinion of his abilities Naruto joked Kakashi just shrugged I'm not blind Naruto besides Gara is a dangerous ninja very powerful very deadly I know that's why I don't get why do you think you can teach Sasuke anything in a month that would help him against Gara. what we saw him do that's just a tip of the Iceberg no matter how you train Sasuke he won't be able to beat Gara. I plan on teaching Sasuke how to survive that match not to win it maybe he'll even weaken Gara so that you could finish him off later Kakashi said and paid for Naruto's bowl I've already made arrangements for you to meet your temporary trainer he's an elite ninja too so I'm convinced he'll train you well his name is Ebisu meet him tomorrow at the training field 17 exactly at 8 and he is a bit arrogant and pompous but he knows his stuff Jaini Kakashi was pretty much on spot with Ebisu the guy was tall athletic and had a pompous attitude about a mile wide mostly in terms of belief about his own abilities and in his attitude that demanded proper show of respect to those of certain station in life and so on he was full of ideas about what was proper or not about how people should think and behave and he talked a lot Nato didn't force choke the man for one reason only Ebisu was a decent sparring partner and had connections with some ANBU types who provided him with specific items Naruto needed to beat Niji Ebisu showed decent appreciation of Naruto's plans which also went in his favor right now the two were sparring Ebisu dashed forward his palm striking towards the blonde genin in an attempt to hit him but Naruto slapped each aside and tried to kick Ebisu's knee it was a fast and precise attack that forced Ebisu to vault in a side flip then roll and do a quick leg swipe that Naruto avoided with a short jump and kunai throw at Ebisu's head Naruto could have tried to kick Ebisu's head but that would also draw a risk of being slapped on the leg by Ebisu in a simulated juke encounter as Ebisu demonstrated several times before Ebisu rolled away then flipped on his feet and vanished in a burst of speed Naruto turned in time to block his low kick and his kneecap and to grab Ebisu's forearm for a body throw over his shoulder Ebisu's other hand flashed forward aiming for Naruto's lungs so Naruto let go of his other arm opting to stay out of his palms range both ninjas were breathing heavily they were fighting for quite a while impressive reaction time Uzumaki Ebisu commented while fixing his shades that it is eyes you're not too bad at this fake juke and stuff either Ebisu sensei Naruto sent a compliment to the man he noticed Ebisu liked praise so he used it whenever appropriate without trying to look like a suck up they made several fast and furious exchanges of attacks and counters before Ebisu signaled it was time to stop he wiped his forehead and straightened his gown and jacket carefully it was a mark of his rank and he loved it that's enough for today Uzumaki Ebisu said we must relax it's also a part of the training let's have you practice katas on the water you may use your shadow clones for light sparring to learn katas better I'll observe he vanished in the swirl of leaves and Naruto followed him in the same manner it took a while to talk Ebisu into revealing how to perform the shunshin but with shadow clones Naruto learned it in two days also the force helped a lot with it because he always could see where he would end up in advance they met again at the local hot spring its boiling water provided Naruto with sufficient incentive to maintain his footing above the surface and he did so with ease his clones either followed his moves or made short attacks that Naruto avoided with eyes closed Ebisu looked at Naruto with approval despite his fears the boy proved to be a hard worker with excellent grasp of shinobi tactics Kakashi didn't exaggerate about his star pupil who actually needed only gentle pushes in right directions to realize his vast potential Ebisu also liked his respectful attitude quick thinking and obedience a model student and strong ninja in his own right Ebisu heard an unpleasant giggle Nerby and turned in annoyance to see who dared to disrupt the holy silence in the clearing behind women's bathhouse he glared angrily at the shameless white haired man who was sinfully peeking at women inside violating their privacy and beautiful bodies Ebisu
shook his head of the unwanted imagery containing nude big-breasted ladies and rushed the pervert to punish him he was knocked out in a second Naruto almost dropped in the boiling water as he saw Ebisu being taken down by some perverted ninja in a second the guy didn't even look at Ebisu as he summoned a large toad who knocked out the jounin with his, her tongue ahem Naruto cleared his throat from behind the white-haired summoner, now identified as Jiraiya of the Sanin he was the only guy with. The toad summoning contract go away Jiraiya mumbled an annoyed tone never looking at Naruto as he scribbled something on his notepad I won't go away you pervy bastard Naruto hissed in a false angry outburst you hurt my sensei and I'll go to the ANBU and they'll take care of you Jiraiya turned around so fast that he made it look like he switched sides without moving he was sweating bullets and making panicked hand gestures come on kid, it's just a small misunderstanding he'll be just fine I don't believe you you attacked the Kanoa I mean you gotta pay, but I'm also Kanoa Ninja Jiraiya protested still trying to stay unnoticed to avoid doing his boring duties as long as possible where's your headband Naruto demanded sharply actually don't tell me anything I can't trust you so I'll just go the ANBU they can sort you out Jiraiya grabbed Naruto in tight grip before he vanished and turned him around with friendly grin relax, kid my headband is a mark of my status as a toad senin I'm Jiraiya of the Sanin no way Naruto faked disbelief you're just an old perf but Jiraiya wanted to whine but he caught himself as he saw the evil glint in the boy's eyes brat are you making fun of me so what if I am Naruto said nonchalantly you deserve that you've got some guts kid to fool with me not many genin would be so disrespecting who are you oh come on Naruto protested you know very well who am I my face betrays me Naruto was talking about his whisker marks which identified him to any Kanoa person that's True Jiraiya admitted as he straightened to his full height so you are Uzumaki Naruto Watcha doing here with that fop Ebisu I was training for the final round of the Chunin exam Naruto explained oh you're that good already I find it odd that the third would make Ebisu your Jounin sensei Jiraiya remarked casually fishing for more info Naruto felt no remorse for ratting Kakashi out to his idol Hataki Kakashi is my real sensei, but he's too busy with Sasuke to train me in his opinion Sasuke needs his help more how so Jiraiya asked out truly interested he found it very surprising that Kakashi would favor one pupil over another even if he was an Uchiha apparently he fears that Gara of the sand he soon as Jinchuriki by the way will try to kill Sasuke and Sasuke isn't strong enough to win now interesting and he doesn't think you'll fight him too why my opponent is Hyudaniji a genius of his clan he is really good and sensei is certain I can't beat him otherwise he'd have to count on me maybe fighting Gara too that made sense to Jiraiya even though he didn't approve of Kakashi's judgment it was clear that he had more concerns for Sasuke than for Naruto he'd have to have a word with the kid Minato taught him better now it's your turn to do what's right Naruto said with smile train me to beat another Jinchuriki Jiraiya laughed why should I have duties to you know maybe but you also like to watch naked women if I were to report your presence to a few Kunoichi I'm sure you'd find it very difficult to enjoy your little habit you wouldn't Jiraiya narrowed his eyes but he knew he was beaten try me Naruto challenged the man his face stony what exactly do you want of me Ebisu is a decent jown and more than enough to prepare you for your matches like I said I want to have a way to beat Gara. he will be my opponent after I deal with that Hyuga prick how huh, you're awfully certain you'll get him that's foolish the Hyuga clan is feared with a good reason Jiraiya said in annoyance Naruto described his plan to Jiraiya who found himself amused by it it had that devilish cunning Naruto's mother was known for he liked it alright I admit your plan is clever maybe it will work it's pretty rare to see Genin who goes for tricks instead of brute force but that won't work on a demon tend to be awfully strong and immune to most tricks with them it's either brute strength or sealing and you can't teach me any seals in a month Naruto said that's right kid but no worries I've got just the right kind of brute force you might you like to be the newest toad summoner Jiraiya grinned widely he couldn't have done better if he planned it it was the night before the final round of the exam Naruto was resting in his apartment meditating and focusing on the coming matches and he knew what was going on his teacher had spied around the village gathering data and observing Kanoa's surroundings it was really hard to miss the signs the shinobi were not as clever as they thought Aren't you going to warn the old fool Avarice asked Naruto as his spirit coalesced in front of Naruto red aura surrounding him why I'm sure he already knows you must have noticed changes in security patterns of the village Naruto answered in an unconcerned manner indeed but they don't expect a team of Orochimaru servants to perform a large summoning aside the west wall Avarice replied in equal manner by the way that sick Jounin from the preliminary phase is dead he was killed by the sand. Jounin with mask over half of his face and now I'm sure that the old man is aware of the impending invasion how pathetic of these morons from the sand to be discovered so soon Naruto scoffed it wasn't their fault that Kabuto boy led the sick Jounin to the meeting place on purpose although he hit it well avarice informed Naruto oh Naruto spoke in surprise that's strange or maybe not it seems that Orochimaru intends to swindle 
both villages while he kills the third he goes away with both villages. Too weak to attack him back Avarice laughed evilly ah so you are aware he killed the Kazakage of course when he came this morning with his false face I sensed it immediately you are becoming a master of the force Naruto that is good very good Avarice purred in satisfaction of a teacher pleased with his student thank you master Naruto bowed slightly what should we do then nothing Avarice spoke coldly tomorrow you must survive let the village fend for itself the third dies tomorrow by his own. Hand I have foreseen it a pity Naruto said feeling some regret over it you could save his life Avarice offered glibly testing Naruto's resolve and loyalty to Sith teachings and reveal myself before time is right no Naruto's response was cold and resolute very well tomorrow you will conquer your last link to this place your last weakness Darth Avarice intoned and Naruto closed his eyes knowing it was his last test before becoming a true Sith the day of the exam was sunny warm and welcoming totally opposite of what was going to happen in the next few hours Naruto and the rest of finalists were lined up on the hard soil of the Chunin exam stadium the only one missing was Sasuke spectators were crowded in their seats a mass of sweating and colorfully dressed people filling the air with noise of their voices and cries and many of them were cleverly disguised spies and enemy ninjas the ANB were also subtly occupying spaces behind the crowd almost unseen but some did know of them like Naruto he could sense the underlying tension in many shinobi they were ready for war all right guys, I'm Shiranui Genma. Your new proctor said a Kanoha Jounin with looks like Mizuki's except he seemed older and he had a large Sinban in the corner of his mouth the rules of the combat are the same as in preliminaries any questions no good now all of you get lost except Uzumaki and Hyuga only Naruto and Niji remained standing opposite of each other everyone on the stadium was deathly silent the expectations of this match were high I see that you're very self-confident Uzumaki Niji spoke coldly to Naruto he obviously like to belittle his opponents I say it's unfounded fate has decreed that you will lose because it pitted you against me there is a vast uncrossable gulf in ability between us and no amount of training can cross it you can't win Naruto just smirked confidently in response to Niji's monologue I see that there is nothing I can do to convince you that I'm right prepare yourself to suffer a humiliating defeat Niji spoke and assumed the Jukin stance as Byakugan activated Naruto acted first by sending four shadow clones to engage Niji while he studied his reactions as he was suspecting Niji was quite skilled and managed to defeat his clones with a single strike for each is that your best Niji sneered at Naruto again in his starting stance more trash is just trash in the end you will lose come on then get me if you can Naruto challenge the boy while throwing down several smoke grenades that produced a thick shroud of smoke Niji's Byakugan saw easily through it and he smirked as he saw several different versions of Naruto clones and he rushed eagerly and he speared those closest to him they were made of dirt and then he danced with others baiting them into blind attacks he had to admit those clones were able to guess his position pretty well they probably relied on the sound but nonetheless they were defeated and he saw the last Naruto retreat from the smoke so he followed Naruto created several clones again and these blocked Niji's attack this time Niji found them much harder to hit they attacked with more coordination covering for each other but Niji was better faster yet the blonde would always send more groups of four and five who nipped at Niji's defenses like hungry wolves for the first time Niji was beginning to worry about his chances for victory his enemy had obviously decided to tire him out and he had the chakra to actually pull it off his breathing was getting ragged his vision swam slightly it's getting to you isn't it Naruto asked with a wide known grin what do you mean loser I can fight for a long time Niji scowled in disdain even though he felt like shit currently those clones drove him hard yeah right with that much poison in your lungs I doubt you'll last more than two minutes from now Naruto cackled what that's right Niji I poisoned you did you really think I was actually stupid enough to believe you couldn't see through the smoke I was just baiting you so you would enter and breathe in some of my special smoke but you breathed it too Niji said and realized it was getting harder to breathe no I just pretended to breathe all you saw me do was to move my lungs as if I was breathing you saw everything but didn't really understand what was going on what use is your bloodline when you can't think properly Naruto smirked and created 10 more clones that rushed Niji in 3 waves Niji run and weaved dodged and ducked while using his remaining strength to beat them but his body was getting sluggish in it was harder and harder to hit them in last ditch attempt to get them out of his way he spun quickly Kate and he yelled producing a spinning wall of chakra that obliterated remaining clones while wow, that's cool Naruto said and he meant it to use chakra in such a way was a great trick he decided to copy it as soon as possible too bad it can't help you now I can still fight Niji said defiantly no you can't Naruto said and vanished from his spot only to appear behind Niji who spun around to strike him with 
his fingers too slow Naruto said as he caught Niji's hand and twisted it quickly it broke at the elbow joint with a dry snap Niji screamed and tried with the other hand but Naruto caught it too blocked Niji's knee and head butted him Niji staggered backwards his face bleeding Naruto kicked him in the groin making most of men in the audience wince in sympathy and then he finished him with a high kick to the head that sent Niji flying for full 3 meters Naruto calmly approached the unconscious boy and extracted a needle injector what the hell is that Ginma said as he appeared with the shunshin next to Naruto the antidote what else Naruto said calmly I can't leave him like that the drug might stop his breathing okay give it to him Ginma said and Naruto injected Niji with a whitish liquid where did you get the lung inhibitor anyway I though it was restricted only to Jounin's in ANBU I happen to know a Jounin who also knows a few ANBU agents Naruto smirked Gemma shook his Head it figures you would win or Uzumaki Naruto Ginma announced and people begun cheering on Naruto as he was leaving the arena ha what do you know the brat actually beat the Hyuga asshole Anko commented to Karinai who was standing next to her with other Jaun and senseis of rookies then she started to jump happily I'm rich I'm rich air you actually bet on him to win Asuma spoke with subdued voice of course the kid is a killer anyone could see that how you bet on the Hyuga how much did you lose? That's my business Asuma huffed and lighted another smoke poor Asuma you won't be able to buy so many smokes for a while Anko cooed to him in fake sympathy and Karinai giggled at that she too hated Asuma smoking further away from them the rookie sat in shock actually it was Ten Ten who remained speechless cha take that bastard Sakura voiced her opinion silently she was still smarting from the humiliating defeat by Niji wow forehead. I didn't know that Naruto was that strong Ino commented of course he is even Sasuke Kuen said so once Sakura huffed in offended tone he's really got a lot of chakra and is quite sneaky that thing with poison nobody would have thought of it right Ino answered thoughtfully do you think he can beat Sasuke Kuen no Sakura answered hotly then she appeared to think about it actually I don't know but Sasuke Kuen is surely a lot stronger now he and Kakashi sensei were training together for the whole month isn't that kind of biased Choji asked while he munched on his chips no Sakura said resolutely I know for a fact that sensei asked another elite Jounin to help Naruto really Ino wondered sure I heard that he also trains Hokage's grandson Ino and Choji shuddered they remembered the annoying nephew of Asuma's who would go around griping about becoming the next Hokage after he beat the third as sensei had to be a saint. To stay on as his teacher congratulations Naruto you were sneaky as usual Shikamaru said in his lazy drawl as Naruto emerged on the balcony where the rest of finalists were thanks Shika I can't wait to see what will you do Naruto grinned evilly and Shikamaru winced his mother heard him complain about having to fight a girl she tore him a new one loud and clear he had to fight Proctor I forfeit Kankuro of the sand spoke loudly as was his turn to fight Shino every spectator booed at him it was cowardly soon it was Shikamaru's turn to face Tamari of the sand it was an interesting match of wits and patience although the audience didn't like all that waiting and positioning it was a hard matchup the girl was a powerful long to mid range wind user while the Nara was limited to only one jutsu the shadow imitation it relied upon him extending his own shadow to catch Tamari's that proved difficult since Tamari knew of his jutsu and was careful to stay away and blast him with her wind attacks but that didn't work so they attempted to outmaneuver each other after his last attempt which involved making a makeshift balloon out of his jacket and kunai to extend his shadow range Shikamaru gave up he was low on chakra and the girl was too smart to fall for his traps Tamari wasn't too happy with such a victory but didn't look into horse's teeth Naruto merely smirked when Gunma called out for Sasuke to face Gara Sasuke was still not at the stadium hey Naruto Kiba called out to the blonde where's that Uchiha asked did he chicken out nope I think he and sensei are going to be fashionably late Naruto smirked in return ease not worried about being disqualified Kiba asked incredulously Kiba were talking about Sasuke the last loyal Uchiha Naruto pointed out to the dog boy who looked annoyed at that revelation you're right that prick could get away with almost anything I hate him Kiba grouched and was even more annoyed when it was confirmed Sasuke and Gara's match was moved for later while Kiba and Lee were called to fight time skip after one forfeit in one long boring match of wits the crowd was now hooting for two new fighters to have a real battle they wanted to see blows exchanged strange Jutsus fired and so on that's why Kiba and Lee were greeted with loud cheers and a great hush fell suddenly like a calm before the storm Kiba Nad Akamaru faced Lee who assumed his good guy pose and gave Kiba a thumbs up sign yash let's do our best in Azuka san let these people see our youth burn brighter than the sun air sure Kiba blinked as his eyes caught the shine of Lee's perfectly white teeth he could have sworn he heard a zing sound or something like it Lee vanished from his spot and Kiba 
rolled down avoiding his kick Akamaru jumped at Lee's jaws clicking audibly as they missed his Taikiba already recovered and rushed at Lee with his sharp nails trying to claw the older Genin but Lee was too quick the audience ooed and odd finally a straightforward hand-to-hand -hand match hey your fast Kiba smiled at the green clad boy so am I Kiba's new speed brought him quickly close to Lee to make him unable to use his powerful kicks Lee proved adept at hand techniques as well as sharp punches and hammer blows were more than a match for Kiba's angry swipes and kicks they moved around in quick steps trying to hit each other but to no avail finally they separated by long back jumps and took a short rest Yashir really good fighter and Azuka San Lee complimented the dog user Guy Sensei was right I will have to go all the way to win Lee kneeled and unlatched the fastenings that served to secure his weights around his forelegs and threw them aside where they landed with a loud bang and made a large crater Kiba's eyes nearly fell out of their sockets Akamaru whined were screwed Kiba thought with grimace and he ate one of his soldier pills quickly he threw another to Akamaru who ate it too and turned into his bigger red furred version Lee's newfound speed made him nearly invisible to spectators except for those who were ninjas he blurred past Kiba's guard easily avoiding his impressive slashes and swipes even though Kiba was in his bestial mode it didn't work against guy's student who run circles around Kiba hitting him occasionally as he passed him by everyone gaped in amazed wonder as Kiba and his red dog were being kicked around like pinballs Lee's speed was insane but even he had to stop for a second or two to catch his breath and that's when Kiba acted he threw smoke grenades at Lee and quickly jumped high forming his trademark double piercing fong attack with Akamaru 2 spinning tornadoes of flesh and claws moved at much greater velocities enough so they could actually hurt Lee in the smoke Lee used his hearing as taught to him by Guy who knew very well what one in Azuka could do and dodged initial assaults even if it was unseen by spectators he focused on his body and concentrated hard Kiba and Akamaru were coming back again Lee with his first gate open disappeared again and launched a mighty downward kick at one of his spinning attackers the kick sent Akamaru reeling his spin and henge broken and Kiba launched himself to catch his Injured partner Lee landed hard his leg hurt by the attack Kiba glared at Lee angrily Akamaru was unconscious he ate another pill and attacked again Lee was dodging but barely and Kiba managed to hit him once leaving four long lines of blood on his back Lee ignored the wound and focused his mind again he knew he had to end this now he was hurt and had one more chance to end this as Kiba attacked again spinning madly Lee opened three celestial gates in his body his muscles bulged his skin was getting reddish color he jumped leaving a small crater in the ground and suddenly he appeared in front of Kiba delivering a powerful front kick that sent Kiba flying backwards Lee touched down and vanished again appearing below Kiba and jumped to smash him down with double handed strike to his sternum Kiba landed with a mighty crash forming a crater in the ground blood flew from his mouth and ears his limbs were splayed wide Lee landed down and fell on his knee his left leg couldn't hold him Anymore he rose slowly visibly in pain Naoginma appeared next to him and checked Kiba out he saw that the Inazuka was out and that Lee was not kid can you walk he asked Lee who nodded winner is Rock Lee Ginma announced and the crowd went wild Lee stared in amazement at such a scene and smiled happily hopping slightly on one foot guy sensei I made it he yelled to his idol and teacher excellent Lee guy yelled loudly amongst his fellow Jounins your fires of youth shine bright today now get some Rest yes guy sensei Lee saluted quickly and marched away from the field Naruto narrowed his eyes in irritation Sasuke wasn't just fashionably late he was very close to being disqualified the audience was booing and protesting again they wanted to see the last Uchiha in action whereas Higara demanded coldly as he turned to look at rookies from Kanoha how the hell are we supposed to know that Naruto scoffed at Gara and looked him in the eye coldly and don't talk to me like that again or I'll Redecorate your face raccoon Naruto grinned viciously as Gara's siblings paled in fear it was caused by two things first no one talked to Gara like that and second why did this Kanoha guy call Gara raccoon Naruto pushed on their minds with the force sending them a massive dose of fear they visibly trembled as his eyes flashed from seraline blue into crimson slits to his disappointment Gara failed to take a hint and grinned maniacally at Naruto his bloodlust rising my mother shall taste your blood Gara said and was to walk towards the blonde but then he whirled around something was going on in the field next to the proctor air shimmered and leaves appeared as if carried by an invisible storm out of them two figures shimmered into existence Kakashi and Sasuke stood back to back making a very showy entrance the audience roared with approval Gara vanished from the balcony in a burst of sand it was the sand shunshin in action Shino Shikamaru get ready to grab those two when I
Give the word Naruto ordered coldly to his fellow rookies you know something Shikamaru whispered out of the corner of his mouth taking care not to be overheard by San siblings who were too preoccupied with their brother I do have a hunch Shika Naruto said an answer that Kankuro guy forfeited and then argued with his sister about saving his tricks for some plan how did you learn that I have very big ears Naruto grinned and Shikamaru sighed Naruto was always a bit secretive I concur with your Assessment Uzumaki San Shino added his two cents I believe something is amiss with San Genin's Kankuro San doesn't seem like a type to forfeit his match all right but you better get them Shino I don't really have much chakra left Shikamaru finally agreed don't worry I'm already working on a small Jinjutsu to confuse them for a short time you will get them Naruto murmured unconcerned with being heard a little application of the force made it so that they all seemed to talk about Sasuke and Gara. Naruto had to admit it Sasuke did get stronger he was able to move like Lee and pummel Gara despite his sand shield that wasn't fast enough to react to Sasuke's speedy assaults how is that possible Lee whispered as he watched the Uchiha move like he did he was devastated by Sasuke's casual display of his hard earned skill it took him more than a year to get there yet the genius Uchiha did it in a month that's the true power of the Sharingan Naruto spoke to Lee and everyone else from Kanoha took care to pay attention to his words even though they still observed Sasuke running circles around Gara. he copied your taijutsu from those few instances he saw you use it and then he trained for the whole month to emulate your style Kakashi sensei probably helped him there he is also quite skilled in that way since he has known Dai sensei for years but you can't just copy my speed or strength Lee protested almost angrily so I must disagree Shino said Gokin is not just mere martial arts style it's a ninja taijutsu style that relies on internal chakra enhancement and that is what uchiha san copied unlike you he can use chakra to make up for his lack of speed and strength lee sighed sadly realizing that no matter what he did someone could always find a way to best him but then he fiercely swore to himself to improve even more to become so strong that it wouldn't matter if he couldn't use chakra like everyone else naruto smiled as he read lee's thoughts and focused back on sasuke as he suspected Sasuke was getting tired he was forced to stop twice already to gather more chakra and the last time he twitched in pain a copy was just that a mere reflection of the original Sasuke was able to imitate Lee nothing more he couldn't use his moves as well as Lee and that was visible to someone with the skill to see it but most of ninjas were just too impressed with his copying ability to see it for what it was finally the last line of Gara's defense was crumbling his sand armor was being chipped away by Sasuke's forceful kicks Gara was being thrown around like a rag doll so he had under the dome of thick sand Sasuke tried to break through it but suddenly erupting deadly spikes changed his mind he stood there for a while studying the barrier and then formed a decision Sasuke spun around and raced back to the wall of the arena using it to stick himself on it Naruto focused his senses on him and he saw him form several seals and grip his right wrist as chakra was being channeled there in extreme quantity Sasuke's fist seemed to be holding a piece of lightning that was chirping loudly as he tore forward leaving a deep trench in the wall and earth behind him his speed was phenomenal almost untraceable to normal eyes Naruto immersed himself in the force deeply as he reached out to see Sasuke better immediately Sasuke and the whole world slowed to a snail's pace colors dimmed at first then brightened to a neon-like quality before regaining their normal but much sharper intensity sounds flowed like a tide but each clearer than ever the whole world seemed more alive but it was Naruto who was in fact more in tune with it Naruto was able to follow Sasuke's movement with ease and he smiled as he saw his two tomos spin Around absorbing the information and relaying it to Sasuke's mind Naruto could see how it all worked contrary to the popular belief there was nothing magical about the Sharingan it was an Aijutsu in a literal sense chakra powered it causing its coloring and working Sasuke's eyes changed color because coils in his eyes were full of energy that changed the structure of his eyes a little altering the way they refracted and absorbed the light because their structure was altered they absorbed the light much better than normal and that resulted in a far better eyesight that included more detailed vision and chakra perception another change occurred down the optical system and it was tied into Sasuke's perception of time the Sharingan caused a feedback reaction in Sasuke's perception areas of the brain allowing for more intensive processing of the extra data being channeled into it that caused the slowing down of external it was Sasuke's brain that operated at a slightly faster rate the I itself regulated that process since only few people possess the actual control of their chakra to do that on purpose without frying their brains ninjas mostly had to let their bodies and chakra do it on their own otherwise they were risking sensory overload and loss of sight or other senses and the precognition wasn't that at all it was just a very good guess of what was going to happen next the Sharingan at its maximum was able to pick up on many details of the enemy's movement and with 
a faster ratio of processing of all those informations at once the Uchiha were able to make a pretty solid guess of what would happen if a person moved this or that way compounded with experience that ability was almost error free that's why only raw speed and greater power or skill could defeat the Sharingan it was only as good as was its user Naruto saw that Sasuke would hit Gara by sheer luck, and refocused his attention on Gara's siblings he slammed them with a powerful force psychic wave. Paralyzing them for a few moments their minds went blank when Gara's sand dome fell apart to reveal him with a bleeding shoulder and babbling maniacally Naruto nodded to Shikamaru whose hands formed a seal and his shadow grabbed onto shadows of Gara's brother and sister Shino's bugs erupted from under his long coat and encircled them then the Jinjutsu struck the whole stadium, but no one among contestants fell to it Naruto appeared next to sniveling Gara, intending to finish him off but had to roll aside to avoid the attack of his sensei Genma moved between them and suddenly Sasuke fell down screaming as one ANBU agent just extracted a long needle from his neck Naruto had the masked traitor who was actually Kabuto in disguise hello Naruto kun Kabuto said cheerfully standing over Sasuke's fallen form he removed his mask so your Orochimaru's man Naruto said as if he realized it just then indeed I am and this was the perfect chance to give Sasuke kun the gift he so deserves after all it was your idea to wait for a better time Orochimaru Sama was pleased with his display of talent so I was given a go to brand him with Orochimaru Sama's cursed seal it looks painful Naruto noticed as Sasuke was burning with fever nothing's gained without some pain Naruto kun Kabuto chided suddenly Lee blurred and trying to land a kick at Kabuto who casually avoided it and swiped his palms at Lee who fell down and was unable to walk it happened so quickly that no one could act ha as if one Pitiful Genin could best me I'm as good as Ataki Kakashi what did you do to him traitor Ginma growled I just cut tendons in his legs he won't walk for a while unless you find a friendly medic mean to fix him Kabuto grinned then slowly distanced himself from Sasuke and approached Gara. can you do anything for him Baki asked Kabuto who checked Gara careful not to antagonize the mad Genin not here I must take him away our plan is not ruined yet Kabuto said good take him away and then fix him so he can wreak havoc on Kanoa, I'll take care of Kanoa means Kabuto nodded and took Gara away with him using the Shunshin to escape the war zone Uzumaki go and stop them at any cost Genma ordered to the blonde but take care of the green idiot and your teammate first Hai Naruto said and took Lee in a fireman's carry then he created a shadow clone to take Sasuke he made a step and vanished too his clone copied his actions you Kanoa bastards, so arrogant Baki scoffed disdainfully what do you think? that he can do against Garaganma smiled coldly I think he can do a lot unlike some people we have a saying here fight fire with fire it goes Baki paused as he connected the dots no you can't have one of them Ginma laughed and how did you think our fourth Hokage defeated the QB Baki cursed as he launched himself at the Sinban chewing bastard Naruto sighed in annoyance as he landed in the rather short alley between Kanoa's civilian buildings to deposit his cargo Sasuke and Lee what are you? Doing Naruto Sam Lee asked as he painfully sat on the ground his legs now useless it's far too risky to carry you two around the enemy will see us and I won't be able to protect you two as well as I should Naruto said and here is the manhole for you to hide in with Sasuke until this whole mess is over but we Lee tried to protest but Naruto shook his head negatively you do realize you're not combat able at the moment don't you Lee look down his answer was not necessary look it's not your fault but you can still be a useful comrade and protect Sasuke I can't take him to the hospital it's probably under attack right now and there is no one able to help him I suspect that even without this attack no one would have been able to help anyway you're right I'll do my best to protect Sasuke Sam Lee smiled widely giving to Naruto another one of his blinding smiles good just hide down there and I'll pick you up later good luck Naruto said and left Lee with two of his clones to help him go down the manhole Naruto went back to the stadium he needed help although he could find Gara and Kabuto on his own he didn't believe he could deal with both of them alone not plausibly so there would be questions later of what he did and more importantly how he did what he did so he had to conceal his true skills yet again it was frustrating to have to hide his true powers but he wasn't stupid as time would come on the way back he got ambushed by four sound ninjas who encircled him on the roof of a building near the stadium look what's come our way guys one of them maybe a few years older than Naruto said a live target another snicker hefting a chain and spiked metal ball on its end you took the word from my mouth Naruto chuckled viciously as his palms rose sideways blue white lightning bolts spearing two of his would be killers but they didn't stay with them instead they jumped on their comrades making a bizarre scene where four sound shinobi were twitching and jerking in the air.
comically while their bodies were being literally cooked by the high voltage currents after a minute Naruto dropped his palms and four corpses thudded on the roof Naruto smiled and sighed in relief at least he got to blow some steam off in the end he reached the stadium quickly and carefully picked his way between combatants using the force to make everyone ignore his presence he found Kabuto's ANBU mask and chuckled softly that guy sure did make it easy for him he found Kakashi cutting a bloody swathe trough attacking ninjas and Naruto had to give him props for the sheer skill and ease with which he killed them he actually looked bored Kakashi sensei he yelled at him to draw his attention yo Naruto what's up Kakashi said and killed another stupid ninja trying to sneak up on him I need your help Gara san is taken by that traitor Kabuto out of the combat zone he plans to heal him so he could unleash his biju on Kanoha whereas Sasuke Kakashi asked as he couldn't see his other pupil anywhere he's in another part of the village with Lee Naruto said deciding against telling him about Sasuke's condition there were greater concerns now all right so what's this Kakashi asked as he noticed the mask in Naruto's hand this is Kabuto's mask he was pretending to be one of the ANBU I think your summons may use it to get his scent your right summoning Kakashi said and brought forth pack in a small deep voiced pug hey Kakashi what's the emergency I need you to track this scent Pack and fast Kakashi said and gave him the mask to sniff at reeks of snakes Pack and said with disgust but I can follow his trail follow me in the end they picked up two extra people Shino and Shikamaru who were done with Gara's siblings but their little troop had to part their ways soon I smell seven no eight shinobi behind us Kakashi Pack and said in worried tone and they seem to be heading straight for us HM Kabuto must have called for backup Kakashi mused there will be at least one Jounin to aid them so who's going to stop them Naruto asked as they were running through thick treetops the whole area and intersected by shafts of bright sunlight it made a for confusing battleground at least for those unused to Kanoa's environment I'll stay and stop them Shikamaru said while it was clear he hated the idea stopping Gara and this Kabuto guy will be hard enough as it is and I doubt that I'd be of any help their true Kabuto claimed to be as good as Kakashi sensei Naruto said in turn hiding his surprise at Shika's courage Kakashi looked at Shikamaru and Side he too understood what was on stake but he didn't like it at all I will help Nara Sanchino said calmly it is only logical we can set a double layer trap for those behind us we can pull it of that seemed to mollify Kakashi's misgivings about sending two relatively inexperienced genin in an unknown combat situation very well but make sure to get the jounin in the end he is your biggest concern hi hi Shikamaru grunted still unbelieving of his own actions Shino followed after him silently and soon they were all alone that didn't make Shikamaru feel any better it didn't take too long before their pursuers made themselves known they were supposed to anyway eight men in bland gray uniforms and with sound headbands emerged from shadows looking for their quarry and Shikamaru acted quickly as shadow snagged theirs easily there were shadows aplenty around ha I can't move one sound mean said and others grew alarmed as well they saw Shikamaru then so this is the famous shadow Captured Jutsu of the Nara clan the oldest among them sneered it's called the shadow imitation now Shikamaru said his body showing some strain as he struggled to hold all of them still whatever you're running out of chakra already and when you do you're dead the sound mean growled I think not Shino spoke calmly as his bugs descended on them and they started to scream loudly as they were being sucked dry by chakra eating insects then a figure flashed between Shino and Shikamaru in more colorful clothes but still unmistakably a sound ninja he slashed contemptuously at them with his kanai's cutting them across their throats they fell down clutching their wounds and the jounin sneered a couple of brats managed to kill a group of idiots he said as he watched other sound means trash on the ground he was to move to catch up with other kanoa ninjas but found himself paralyzed correction we are about to kill some idiot shikamaru said as he was holding his hands in a sign for his jutsu yuhao the jounin asked as he struggled to move we knew there was a jounin with these incompetents so we set a double trap what you killed were shino's bug clones while we were hidden behind them with a jinjutsu indeed my sensei is not called the jinjutsu mistress for nothing shino said and a part of shadows came alive becoming a mass of chittering insects that overtook the form of the hapless ninja from the sound village their hunger was substantial since their master had to expand some of his own chakra to create that Jinjutsu Shikamaru sat in the ground and sighed in relief he only hoped that Naruto and Kakashi were successful. 